Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez, and today we're going to compare the global shutter of the A9 III and the mechanical shutter of the A7R5 at high shutter speeds. Okay, so we're on location. I've got one of my friends in his car. We're going to do a fake senior portrait shoot, and we're going to underexpose the background. So we've got the sun, uh, camera right over here, coming in beside a building, and then we've got a pretty clear path for the sky back here. This building over here um, to my left is kind of in the shadow so i'm going to try to keep that out of it as much as possible but the point is to have the sun behind him we want to take advantage of the global shutter and be able to shoot at one eighty thousandth of a second and get my westcott fj 400s to fire at full power and use their full capabilities so those of you that know the advantages to global shutter know that one of the downfalls to a mechanical shutter is the fact that you have to use high speed sync and that's why this is so huge with the global shutter because you don't have to use that anymore because the technology is different. It reads the sensor all at once. So in this, in the old, old cameras with the mechanical shutter, it reads it line by line. That is hard on those lights because they have to fire con like constantly with pulses when you go higher than the camera's sync speed. So that makes them lose power. So you can't, even though it's a 400 watt second strobe, you're not gonna get 400 watt seconds out of it. So I wanna compare the same shutter speeds with both cameras to see what the difference really is and how much power you lose with high speed sync. So the only thing is we're gonna shoot some of these at one eighty thousandth of a second because that's, that's what this camera will go to. I wanna see what it'll do. This camera, the old cameras won't do that. It only goes to one eight thousandth. So we're gonna to have to come down to that with both cameras to compare them evenly, but I also wanna take some higher shutter speeds with this one just to see how, how that global shutter performs. So you can see the car's being worked on he actually got a flat before the shoot, so we had to kind of call an audible a little bit, but we made it work. I always say photography is problem solving, so this was this was a good um, a good lesson, I guess, not to panic, just to kind of adjust things and still make the shoot work. So that's what's going on back here. But um, so when you shoot at these high flash, uh, high shutter speeds, excuse me, you have to adjust the flash timing setting in the A93. Otherwise, the flash won't fire in the shot because it's gonna miss it because the shutter speed's too fast. So it's one thing you have to keep in mind because Westcott has that field guide that tells you what to put that at, we're gonna be good to go. So we're gonna use that on the, high, on the high shutter speed settings and then we're gonna shoot both the cameras at one eight thousandth and lower and try to underexpose the, side, the sky and see what the difference is. All right, so that wraps up shooting. As you guys can see, there is a huge difference. I didn't really know what to expect. I had not seen any comparisons on actual photos between high-speed sync, the same settings with that, and then with the global shutter with the A9 III. So it, it does make a big difference. You lose substantial power with high-speed sync. And I know that everyone says that you do, but it's different when you see it and actually visualize you know, what, what's happening there. So even though I shoot dramatic with the current equipment that I have, I'm gonna be able to shoot even more dramatic once I have a camera with a global shutter. So I was very impressed by that. We'll show all the pictures at the end of the, at the end of this video. So I'll show you some that I took with the A9 III with the higher shutter speeds that the A7R5 wouldn't go to. So you can see how much you can underexpose. And I actually couldn't, um, couldn't go, I was at full power with my deep focus reflectors, which I, which I usually have to use for action shots with athletes in the middle of the day. I had to turn them all the way down to like five out of nine or four out of nine. So that's gonna enable me to back them way up, still be at full power and still underexpose the background, which is a huge deal for me being a sports photographer, especially. I wanna say a special thanks to Sony for sending me the camera. That's not mine. They just let me borrow it just for the video. That was really cool and I, I appreciate it a lot. Um, I think it was definitely worth it. I hope everybody enjoyed it. If you did, if you got something out of it, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe so I can keep making content that helps support me. 
hit the bell so I, you get notified whenever I post new content. And if you want to see a behind the scenes and a walkthrough on how I created the last picture, make sure you head over to Patreon. We're going to link that below in the description and check that out. Uh, it'll be the uh, mid-tier subscription is what we're going to post that on. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.